Hi everyone, here's another monthly news wrap up. I'm still trying to figure out the format for these videos, which is why I didn't do one last month. So you'll see that the format of this video will change as you go through it. I'm still not set on how I'll present the video in the future, but I figure I should still go ahead with them. And as I get more used to making these, I'll eventually find a format I like. With that being said, let's get into the Mr. News. So I started out the first week talking about a 32X sound fix. The previous week, the core had just been released, but had some issues with sound where some digital audio would play way too fast and sounded like chipmunks. So thanks to Kittrinx, that issue on the 32X core was fixed. And there was some really cool news for Sinden light gun owners and Mr. FPGA owners that want to play light gun games on their CRT television. The creator of the Sinden light gun has purchased a Mr. FPGA and is hoping to get the Sinden light gun working natively right on the Mr. Currently, you could use the Mr. FPGA with the Sinden light gun, but it's a very convoluted process that involves an Arduino and a Raspberry Pi. I personally don't think it's worth it going through all that trouble just to get it working. Hopefully, we'll get some Sinden light gun support really soon. The Mr. CRT guide was added to the official Mr. GitHub in May. This CRT guide is a wiki that helps users who want to connect their CRTs, PVM, BVMs onto their Mr. FPGA. If you look at this table of contents, you can see guides for connecting to RGB, component, and VGA capable sets. You have options for connecting to composite and as video capable sets. You have a section on configuring the Mr. INI settings, any specific core on-screen options that you need to set. Some cores need custom video modes and there's a section for that. And you have a section for frequently asked questions and any remaining core problems. To help you along with the CRT settings, Thor created a CRT mode line creation guide. What mode lines are, these are specific settings that you could put on the Mr. INI file that lets you exactly dial in the specific capabilities of your CRT. It's really for advanced users that know the capabilities of what their CRT can do. And there was a brand new core for the arcade game Turkey Shoe released by Birdie Bro. The game Turkey Shoe was released by Williams in 1984. In the game, a third of the world's population has been transformed into killer turkeys. You take the role of a turkey terminator to get rid of these turkeys. The arcade cabinet had a gun mount similar to Operation Wolf to help you accomplish your mission. We got the news that texture filtering was added to the PlayStation Core. What texture filtering does is basically smooth out the blockiness in the textures for the PlayStation games. If you look at the screenshot posted on the Core Developer's Twitter, you can see here that the textures are blocky right here. But if you look on the other screenshot, it's a little bit smoothed out. There is some, some blockiness, but it's much smoother than what you get on the other screenshot. The DualShock controller option was also added to the PlayStation Core. With this option, you were also given the ability to switch between digital and analog settings. Robert Pipe, the PlayStation Core developer, also mentioned that the release of the PlayStation Core was pretty imminent expecting it to come out in May. I highlighted an awesome website on vampire.net that gives you a lot of information for the PlayStation Core. It gives you details on how to exactly set it up, including some tips on what BIOS is to use, and also gives you much more information. So check out the website on vampire.net. Hotego had taken some of his private beta cores and released them to the public. Those cores were Robocop, Bad Dudes vs. Dragon Ninja, Midnight Resistance, Hippodrome, Heavy Barrel, Sly Spy, Bandit, Boulder Dash, and Birdie Try. Mr. Retro Wolf had posted his episode 12 of his Mr. Core development series. This episode involved the display and CPU, and you were also shown how to get a test screen going. If you're interested in any FPGA development and would like to create your own Mr. Core, Check out his channel. Darren O had given some quick updates on his Terraforce core. At the time, he had its sprites, sound, and some input. 
A script to more quickly run games from your Mr. Menu was released by Wizzo Mafizzo on GitHub. What the script does is scan all the games on your Mr. and creates a games folder. In that games folder, you will see individual games of the games lo listed on your Mr. You can then directly run a game that's listed. For example, on the Genesis Core. Instead of you loading up the Genesis Core, then going into the load game menu and looking for Sonic, you instead just go to the games folder on your mister that was created by the script and run Sonic from there. It bypasses you the process of going to the actual Genesis score to run the Sonic game. And for the second week of May, I started off the news with talking about the Mr. Multisystem handheld prototype, which was nicknamed Handy. This prototype was developed by the creators of the Mr. Multisystem, and you can get a lot of information on the Multisystem if you visit the RMC The Cave YouTube channel. In this post, they were just gauging the interest that people had on a device like this. And if it ever is released, it's not going to be until like way into the future. They just have prototypes of the device. But I feel it's something that's pretty cool and should be pursued. I would love to have a Mr. Portable device. And regarding the creators of the Mr. Multisystem and the developers of the Portable Mr., Bob from Retro RGB did an interview with them. So if you want to find out even more information on, on the devices that they created, check out that interview. Dopefish, the creator of the MT32 project, had developed his own official version of an MT32 Pi for the Raspberry Pi 02W. And obviously, it's compatible with the Mr. FPGA. Please consider buying his version of the project because it will definitely help fund the future development of the MT32 Pi project. But as you can see right now, it's currently sold out, so I guess it's pretty popular. And PlayStation Core updates done that week were Konami Justifier support was added, a 180 degree rotation option was added specifically for shooters. There is multi-bio support, giving you the ability to select three different bioses, helpful for region selection or auto detection. Snack support was also added, and Mr. Addons showed off a version of a snack adapter that he was creating. There are also bug fixes done for the PlayStation Core that got Dance Dance Revolution working, fix issues in LEGO Island 2, Shadow Man, Brain Dead 13, and Mission Impossible. There wasn't a track mode script that was released for your Mr. FPGA. What this script does was create a sort of screensaver for your Mr. FPGA that will cycle through different games for a certain amount of time. Pretty useful if you have an arcade cabinet and you want to see games running constantly while you're away. The creator of that attract mode script, Alexander Upton, also created another script that gives you a flat menu on your Mr. FPGA for vertical arcade games. So you have an arcade cabinet that has a screen that's mounted vertically. Then you can set your Mr. FPGA to only show vertical games, which will look best on that type of setup. Twitter user RNDMNK3 released a beta core for the arcade game Alpha Mission. Alpha Mission was a 1985 vertical shooter created by SNK, and its gameplay was similar to Xevious in that you had separate air-to-air -air and air-to-ground weapons. Darren O oh had added support for a new game for his Terra Crusta core. The game is Soldier Girl Amazon. Attract 17 had given us a couple of updates on their Patreon page. We got information that work on Terra Force keeps going, and measurements were taken of an arcade board. Once work on the Terra Force core reaches a point where Attract 17 can help with adding additional titles and features, Darren O oh will start working on Ikari Wars 3 The Rescue. Other games expected to come out of the Ikari Warrior 3 core are POW, Street Smart, and Search and Rescue. A beta core for Hotego's Patreon subscriber for the arcade game Vigilantily was released. Vertec had also shown us the first signs of life for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles core. Initially, the self-test report was showing up as really glitchy. It was then approved to show a little less glitchy. Eventually, the self-test report was showing fine, and all the RAM tests were showing up okay, but the graphics ROM reported as bad because the CPU couldn't access them properly. 
If you're interested in using S video or composite on your mister, I had released a video that shows you exactly how to set that up on your mister using cheap devices that you can buy on Amazon, AliExpress, or Monoprice. This is possible through the work that Mike Simone has been doing, creating forks of course that give them the ability of outputting S video natively. He's currently working on an adapter that will consolidate all the wires that you need to have this working. Also, Antonio Villena, a developer of Mr. Hardware, has an adapter that will be compatible with these cores too. There are some news about the Game & Watch core that was being developed. The Game & Watch brand was a series of handhelds developed by Nintendo. The games were really simple, even compared to the original Game Boy, but it was a really cool device to have like back in those days. There were a lot of updates to the downloader script. The downloader script is one of the features of the Mr. FPGA that you may not pay much attention to, but it's very important to keep your Mr. up to date and help keep running smoothly. For the third video in May, I spoke about how Hotego kept on working on the Sega System 18 schematics from the PCB. I mentioned the difficulty that it is to work on that board due to the large number of custom chips. The Sega System 18 board ran arcade games like Shadow Dancer, Alien Storm, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, and others. He also spoke about the Neo Geo Pocket CPU progress. Initially he had the instruction set at 88% complete, then eventually got it to 93% complete. Previously, I spoke about the Beta Alpha Mission Core by R&D MNK3. He then decided to make that core a multi-game core instead. The core will be based on the SNK Triple Z80 platform, which Alpha Mission ran on. Other games that ran on that platform were Akari Warriors, Guerrilla War, Victory Road, and others. At the time that I spoke about this, only Alpha Mission was supported. Mr. Retro Wolf released episode 13 of his Mr. Core development series. On that episode, he spoke about hardware addressing, the usefulness of main for core development, and you get to do your first core launch. The PlayStation Core was also officially released, so you no longer had to go to the Discord to download the core or go to the GitHub and download the unstable nightlies. Now you can just go to the update script or the update all script on your mister and get the core and any updates for the core automatically. Spark 2K06 on the Mr. FPGA forum had started development of a Mr. PCXT core. The PCXT was IBM's second computer in its personal computer line and was released in 1983. It ran on the Intel 88 CPU. I know we have the AO46 core that can run software from this computer, but having different cores for different eras of computers can help target and more accurately implement those errors. The RMC The Cave YouTube channel had posted a video showing more information on the Mr. Multi system, letting you know about any future peripherals they were having, and updates on the availability. They also spoke about the Mr. Portable prototype device that they were building. After Fertig had the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles core showing up without glitches, he then got the first in-game pictures of the core running. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles core is a core that I'm really looking forward to. This game is one of my favorite games of all time and so much fun when you're playing with other friends. We have the first support for MSU1 audio for the Super NES core. The MSU is a custom virtual coprocessor that gives the Super NES the ability to play back CD quality audio as well as addressing 4GB of data which can be streamed for full motion video playback. Think about it as what a Super NES add-on could have been. Then on the following Mr. News video that I created, Super NES MSU1 support was official. So instead of downloading a test copy of the core from the Mr. FPGA Discord, all you had to do was just go onto your Mr., run the update or update all script, and you'll get the MSU1 support automatically. For arcade games based on Nichibutsu hardware, Darren O released a core for Formation Armed F. A track 17 gave us some updates on the Toa Blend core. Of note is the addition of S Video thanks to Mike Simone. Games already implemented in the Toa Blend core are Tatsujin, Hellfire, Zero Wing, and Outzone. Hotego is expected to implement Horror Story. 
Other games for the core that are work in progress are Dash Yaru, same, 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 and Vimana. In May, it was also now possible to test out the Saturn core. You could either just download the source code from the GitHub or download a compiled version that someone did on the Mr. FPGA Discord or the Mr. FPGA forums. Keep in mind that the developer SRG320 did not release any official binaries, not even any alpha, beta, or test version. Someone took it upon themselves to download the source code and compile it. As a result, this is a very buggy core and expect a lot of issues. Otego had finally finished the implementation of the CPU instruction set for the Neo Geo Pocket. He took two weeks to completely focus on that CPU to finish it. Now we're much closer to a Neo Geo Pocket core for the Mr. FPGA. The core for the cave shooter Guwange was made public, so all you had to do now is just run the update script on your Mr. and try out the game. Mr. Retro Wolf released episode 14 of his Mr. Core development series. In episode 14, you review the bullet circuit of the arcade game you're developing, see how that bullet circuit works, and implement it in Verilog code. A new core for the Coleco Atom was also released. The changelog mentions that the core is fairly complete with disk and tape support and CPM works. Savory Snacks created a post on the Mr. FPGA forums of a Conix Multisystem core that he's developing. The Conix Multisystem was a UK based attempt to produce a console and it was never truly finished, but it did come close to being finished. He previously produced a software emulator for it and now decided to create a Mr. FPGA core. Eric S5 on the Mr. FPGA forums told us about a Commodore 128 core that he's working on. We got some more updates on the PCXT core by Spark2K06. It uses a new BIOS from Sergey Kisilev's XT8088 BIOS project. A turbo mode was also added, so you could change the speed from 4.77 MHz to 7.16 MHz. And you also have now options for monochrome monitor simulation. You can change it to green, amber, or black and white. RCA Victor Co. announced a new arcade core they are developing. It's based on the arcade game Psychic 5. On their Patreon page, you can also see the other cores that they are working on. For the Konami GX400 hardware, there's Konami Bubble System, Nemesis, which you can already get a beta for, Salamander, Kitten Kabudos, and Hyper Crash. Games that RCA Victor Co. is planning to work on are SATA hardware games like the New Zealand Story, Carnov, Outrun, Darius, the three screen version, Darius 2, the 3 and 2 screen versions, and Title F3 games. Paul Bianel announced the Super Game Boy core that he's working on. To create this core, what he did was combine the Super NES core and the Game Boy cores into one Super Game Boy core. He modified the Super NES portion of the core to only support the Super Game Boy. Otherwise, it wouldn't fit onto the FPGA. On Reddit, there was a post by user Kaldor82 that shows you how to run Amiga CD32 games on the Mr. FPGA's Amiga core. They showed two methods on how to accomplish this. One method was to use some software that will mount CD32 ISOs. Another method was to use software that will let you create CD32 emulation boot disks. Otego revealed to us the next core that he's working on and will release in beta. That game is the arcade game Pang, developed by Mitchell Co. Mike Simone gave us some updates on the hard work that he's doing tuning cores to give them S-Video support. He's hoping to finish another 46 arcade cores. He's doing really great work because there are a lot of televisions out there that only have S-Video or composite inputs. So that's another month of awesome Mr. Development news. Links to all sources are provided in the description. Make sure you also check out RetroRGB.com to see my Mr. News videos in blog form and to also get more retro related content. And if possible, please support them on Patreon too. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you wanna see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and it's bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time. <music>